Good morning, everybody. My name is Ann Rossley. I'm here with my colleague, Kyle Harvey. Together, we are realtors extraordinaire out of the Gold Coast office. We sell real estate and we love to come to you every week and talk about what's happening in downtown Chicago real estate. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so dark. I, I, it's, I'm having a hard time waking up these days. Right. Happy October to you. Happy October. Yeah, we're, we're very close to another time time change, another year, another dollar. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm shocked every single year, every year. Where does this come from? Why is it so dark? I know, oh, I know. There we go. But so, I love my long days. So today, you and I are going to be talking about uh, why this home didn't sell or what would we do differently. We're going to take, depending on the timing, we're going to take two different properties that are currently on the market. We're going to dish on why they haven't sold yet and what we would recommend. Is that right? Yep. But first, we've got stats because I live for stats. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if I can share a screen and get this going. I, you know what I did? I just did... Um, North Chicago Township only this time. I figured next week we'll talk about the other one, uh, Lakeview Township. Yeah. Okay, so so I always like the first Monday of the month because I get to talk new statistics. And these this is everything. This is condos and single family homes year to date. We've hit the $3 billion mark in terms of real estate sales, which is up 60% over last year. Uh, just in North Chicago. Remind people the boundaries. Yes. So that is the Chicago River to the south, the Chicago River to the west, Fullerton on the north and the lake on the east. So geographically, wow. a very small area, but it has just been bonkers with real estate. Wow. Yeah. All right. So look at condos only. Condos accounted for $2 billion worth of those sales, up 57%. And this chart shows you the closed. I'm going to clean that up a little. There we go. Uh, interesting, we're tapering off. You know, it's funny, Kyle, you and I both have talked about the fact that it feels like it's so slow uh, in terms of foot traffic and sales in the last month. And we keep reminding ourselves that it's slow compared to bonkers what it was exactly it's slow compared to bonkers but look at this number in terms of closed sales we are so far ahead most other months all the time yeah look, you know other years look at 2019 we're yeah. almost at the peak of 2019 yeah right here yeah exactly right and look how low the low was so yeah. um and this has been the entire year is up like this so yeah. total yeah. bonkers under contract. Under contract is a lagging indicator as well of the real estate market, but it's less of a lagging indicator because this shows what's going to close in the next 45 to 60 days. Again, this has dropped off a bit, but still August, which is usually a slow month for going under contract, is still higher than most other months over the last three years. Yeah. I thought I would show you Oh no, here's the median sales price. We'll get to that, what I'm just gonna talk about in a minute. Median sales price. We're at about 390 right now. Uh, it's come down a little bit, but um, you and I both know that could be an indicator that lower price properties are more frequently selling. Yeah, and remember we've got these wackadoodle high expensive pro properties. And if they're not closing, you know, or when they close, we'll get these strange peaks because they will they will throw off the market. A ten million dollar unit will throw off the market. Exactly right. Why do I have that in there? Oh, I know why. Because I wanted to oh, show median you. Is better. Median tells you more. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. So before we were looking at this section of the chart. Mm -hmm. Now I'm back since 2006 wow. and you can see that it's not as wild a price change fluctuation because we have been generally speaking on an upward trend since 2012. And even look at the crazy high, uh, um, well, actually this is right after the crash. 2000, well, 2008. 2012. 
Yeah, it took about four years before sellers finally realized if they were going to sell, they had to reduce their prices. And yeah. that's pretty typical. So, you know, we were still riding high in 2008. And then by 2009, we started to decline. So since 2012, we've gone from 275 median sales price up to 390. That's good. That's been good. Yeah. Finally, absorption rate and uh, my favorite statistic. Look at this. At one point we were in, this was in 2008-9. Look at that. We were up to 17 months worth of inventory. In other words, just about a year and a half worth of condos were on the market. Uh, and it took us by reducing the prices until 2013 to 14 to get that way down. Today, we are sitting at under five months. So, very good so, market. Very, you know, Balance. good, healthy market. Yeah. Absolutely. Single family homes up almost 74% over last year, which look at this. It was in the near North area, or excuse me, the North Chicago township. 2020 year to date was higher than 2019. And I think that's an indication. Remember how, when we came out of COVID, everybody was like, gotta buy a house, gotta buy a house, gotta buy a house, gotta get out of a condo. And so I think by August, we were starting to catch up in, in closing. Remember, we by mid-April, we were showing houses. Remember, we were doing it virtually, whatever. And by August, it was up again. I thought, I think this statistic is really fascinating. But see, even after we were up over last year, which was up over 2019, which we still thought was a really good year, right? Right. 660 million, almost 661 million, just in that small geographic area. And remember, this is a geographic area of a few houses. Right. Comparatively speaking. I mean, once you get into North Chicago, it's just houses, houses, houses. Right. Or not right. North Chicago, Lakeview. You mean Lakeview Township. Yeah, yeah Lakeview. exactly right. Okay, so closed sales, like condos, down a little bit in August here. But again, very strong compared to the previous years. Under contract, I just put a line in here to show you. Yeah, we're wow. coming back up a little bit. See, isn't that interesting? It still felt slow to me, but yeah, interesting. Okay, so median sales price, median sales price in single family homes was a million one two five. I think it was, yeah, a million one two five. Uh, but do I have it? Yeah, I do. I have the 10 year chart. To show you again, 2010 through 2012, low, low, low. And then, you know, we've been on an increase. Yeah. Supply of homes for sale, only three months worth of supply. Way down here. Way down. Not enough homes for sale. So that's that. And that's your stats. Yeah. Gosh, this is such a, this, this is going to be a year. It's going to be interesting to see 2022 and how it stacks up against this crazy year. You know what I mean? Right. right. That it, we're going to, because if it goes just back to a normal year, it's going to look like a disaster. <laughs> but it's not, I mean, yeah, we can't keep up at this pace. It's just not possible. It's not possible. All righty. I'm going to start, we're going to start our next episode, uh, our next feature. I'm, we're going to talk about what we might do differently if with these listings. So you know that Anne and I spent, uh, are we up? Yes, there we go. Anne and I study what's going on in the market and try to understand why things don't sell. And um, so uh, we today we thought we'd spend some time on a couple of listings and my, I'm going first. And okay. it's, um, this is a Lincoln Park township, a townhouse in, an, in, a, in a townhouse development that people often will tell me, hey, if anything comes on this um, development, let me know, I'm interested. They don't have, they have very few, this is the only property for sale and it's four bedrooms, three and a half bath, um, fee simple, and Anne will tell you a little bit about that, townhouse. There are very few this size in that development. So what makes a great fee simple townhouse? And? Well, fee simple means you're you basically uh, own it like you would a single family home. You don't have to pay 
big fees for landscaping, taking care of your neighbor's roof. You're responsible for your own roof. You're responsible for your own exterior. And basically, sometimes it includes water. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have your own water bill. There's usually an association that governs, um, but that's just to make sure that the uh, exteriors are main, that they look uniform, right? Because that's what maintains value. So, um, here, we, so here you're basically have, like owning a single family home, low assessments, and you right. get to do what you want to do. And and the reason I think this one will have a, um, a, a, a an assessment is you drive into this courtyard. Okay. And, yeah. And you've got to pave it. You've got to, right. you've got to maintain it. There's probably something about the garbage. You know, there, there are probably some things that go into that 225 a month, but that's nothing. Right. Um, and it's, this is a big house, 2,600 square feet. Um, and the taxes are 14, just under um, $15,000, which is, and it's in Prescott. Um, elementary school, which is a pretty Everybody's good- Everybody's looking to go to Prescott these days. Yeah. 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 So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow, 860 appears to be a good price for 2610 square feet. Fee simple. Fee simple with a little Four front bedroom. yard. So what's, what's okay. and two car parking? Not every townhouse has two car parking. Well, it has, it has one garage and one pad or one- Okay, but still you can park two cars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what's the story? It's been on the market for all for a year and a half. Wow. And it was listed privately um, right at the start of COVID. Remember when we were in lockdown, everyone's sort of thinking yeah. we'll come out of it. They put it on the private market. Um, on May 1st, 2020, it goes on the MLS at 910. I would think that that would be, you know, because people want to get out of town, how, uh, get out of multi-unit buildings, that this might be a very attractive property. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. The first price drop um, was 3%, and the second price drop was just under 5%. Usually, if you're going to do a price drop, you've got to do something that captures people's attention, and usually right. that's 5%. I, I always think about if I'm the, that a little one doesn't tell anybody anything. Right. So, um, so that's, that's what's been going on. And here's my diagnosis, and I'll, we'll show it to you in the, in the pictures. They made a bad first impression. There was no staging. The description is was really uninviting. Uh, you know, it says large four story, um, four bedroom embassy. Oops, embassy club townhouse. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, private gated entrance. Great for dogs. I mean, it's just it's got nothing. It just I call that the laundry list description, right? But it doesn't this and this and that doesn't make you really want to go see the property. It doesn't make it exciting. The pictures are not okay. professional pictures, as you'll see in a second. And the floor plan, they include a floor plan, but it shows no windows on the second floor. So the bedroom floor <laughs> looks like it's a prison. Um and uh and there's some improvement in the second listing. So uh this one they canceled and relisted with some better pictures. Okay, so this is the first Holy one. smokes! <coughs> no, I mean, I oh I can take better photos than that. Well, not really, but close. <laughs> Hi, let's feature the bathroom. There's a toilet. They have a toilet. <laughs> oh my goodness, that just looks cramped and small, they, and and, and they're who really proud of their floor. Toilet. At least the okay. toilet lid is closed. Okay, so here's the the exam. Here's the floor plan showing. No windows. I'm like, where are the windows? And of course, the windows are here and here and here and you know wherever. But they okay. have no windows. Oh dear! It's the prison that you've always wanted for your family. <laughs> so in the second one, so remember the first entrance was really awful. So they've they've obviously made some improvements. Okay. Um, and they have this staged picture that looks just lovely. Then they spent a lot of time. Um, do, uh, so my rec, so here, you know, so, okay. So I go to my recommendations. One, punch up the description. Matt Laracy sold a beautiful one, smaller, um, two weeks or a couple months earlier, you know, early this summer, beautiful, 
um, had professional photography, used summer photos. It's like, I want to live there. Right. Included a 3D tour and video. He priced to sell it from the start. You'll see. And he, and, um, and my recommendation is fix the goddamn floor plan. <laughs> Sorry, people. I didn't mean to use such language, but oh my God. <laughs> you feel very strongly about that. So example, here is that other one. It's a smaller one. It's one fewer bedroom, one fewer bath, but it sold in seven days for 27,000 over list. It's not, people want to live in this neighborhood. Look at how pretty and bright this looks. You know, this is their outdoor picture. You know, bright, pretty, professional. Mm -hmm. So um, they, you know, it's it's crazy. This this property happens to be owned by a realtor, the one that I was showing you. And um, I'm going to stop sharing. And um, I find that sometimes they sort of think, oh, it'll sell. And don't do the things that you and I would do. Right. So it's too bad. They are they finally priced it where Matt Laracy sold at the price per square foot. Crazy. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to show you a high rise. This is a near North condo building. Uh, and there are actually two that haven't sold. The one's a thousand seven days. The other's 391. We're going to look at the one for 391 because it's now at 659. Can you see that? 659,000. I like to do an analysis when I do a condominium uh, CMA or comparative market analysis for everybody who doesn't know that term, uh, looking at the tiers. And as you know, Kyle, if you're in an F unit, usually every F up and down is the same floor plan, same view. The only difference is floor level and what they've done to the inside. So looking at that tier is the first place everybody should look for getting home values. So looking at all of the Fs in this building historically, and, and granted, this goes back to 2007 and an appraiser would only use the most recent six months. Still, uh, the most recent sale was for 614. Well, there's a red flag for you right there. So the first question is, what do you, Mr. 55F, have that 29F does not, right? Besides height. Besides height. Exactly right. And one of the questions is, and this does sometimes happen, as you go up in a building, at some point you might magically clear a building and then gain additional view. And that really can affect value. That's not the case here. They have essentially the same view. Well, but even look this, at, this is a building that sort of um, tapers. Is this, do they lose square feet as they go up or gain? Well, here's our windows? square feet right here. Yeah, okay, well, no, they don't. And I always find it comical. These agents are rounding up square feet instead of 1904, it's 1910. It's 1915. It's somehow <laughs> they got additional square feet. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, these are, yeah, all two bedrooms, two baths, all about 1900 ish square feet. And here's North and West. I, I just for grins, the C unit is a different exposure. It faces South. Uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but you know, you can That's see a beautiful view that from that building South is beautiful, especially so, when you get up. Beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's my first impression. And I'm looking and I'm saying, OK, if six. But see, here's the thing. Six fourteen. But then in 2019, one went for eight ten, two hundred thousand dollars difference. You know, so there and that was fifty three F versus fifty five F. Yeah. OK, so let's check it out and see what happened. Whoops. I'm going to share with you a different page. Okay, so here's the floor plan. Looking, uh, what did I say, north and west. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice floor plan. One of the challenges is this kitchen is a galley. And everybody recently has wanted their kitchens to be open with a big open floor plan. So um, you're going to see how that affects everything as we go. All right. I'm closing, I'm closing my open kitchen. 
You told me that. Yeah. You have a great galley kitchen that you've had open and you're thinking of closing it up, right? I'm closing it up. Anyway, I'm making it smaller too, but that's me. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So oh. one of the things we can do is we can look at the history and you can see they put it on the market initially for seven twenty five dollars in 2020. Now they're down to six fifty nine dollars in price, 391 days. And this is the living room for that unit. What's under this? Do we have any sense that there's wood floors under this carpet? We have no sense. I don't think there is. It doesn't the description. It doesn't give us any clue. No. Ding dong. No. So um, I would say today, isn't it basically a rule of thumb? No carpet in living rooms. Can't no. you pretty much make a blanket statement to that regard? You can absolutely make that blanket statement. Okay, so here's 29F. This is the one that went for 614. So it's got a li nice little entry. They opened up the kitchen. Yep. Now, not necessarily my styling or taste. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. But we notice, though, go back up. They, they, There are reasons that certain things exist, um, like that crazy um, ceiling height. There is there are air vents in there and they have to have them. So you're never going to be able to have a flush ceiling. You're going to have to have that detailing. Right. If you open it up, you're stuck with this soffit thing here. Yeah. That's what she's talking about. Yeah, absolutely right. OK, same unit. Here we are looking at the view. Great view. Pretty. And here is the view from the kitchen. It actually looks like a, a decent kitchen here. Yeah bedroom and i'm just showing you to get of a flavor of what these look like original okay, baths right so at 614 okay so then i said what happened in 2018 again an appraiser can't use this but it helps us look at the historical data right so 2018 this is the 820,000 look at the lake view and it's summertime shots guys versus summertime the winter shots, shots. That's why we try to get our clients to take photos during the summer, even if they're not selling. Look how pretty this looks with the wood floors. Here's the kitchen. Now here's the galley. It's but again, galley. it's sold for 200000 more. Not my choice of flooring. It looks like paper. No, no, no. That's a rug. That's hard. Well, it is. You're right. You're right. The wood comes through here. But um, And they've got granite with a mosaic tile. But white cabinets clean yeah. bedroom still carpet in the bedrooms bathroom that bath. looks like marble this is this is an upgrade no it's actually wait wait go back the way you know in this building that it's largely the original bath Cabinetry. look at the tub oh the tub flesh oh yeah tone. yeah yeah it shows flesh tone and the sink they chose flesh tone um <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's okay, how you so know original it's it's yeah. original, not it a lot of money. Two hundred thousand dollars more in a worse market. Yeah. Okay, let's Ooh. go back to two thousand nineteen for That's eight ten. Cool. Look at there's carpet, but look at how yeah. handsome that carpet is. That's a carpet again. Floor. We're still around the same floor height here. Yeah. Clean kitchen. Very now sleek. That's updated. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one that hasn't sold. Well, this is room. actually not the living room I showed you in the beginning. This is actually the very first photograph you see when you click on this listing. Now, does that invite you in and say, come by me? No, no. There's that living room. They tried to do virtual staging. Didn't help it, did it? <laughs> Here's the kitchen. You know, the kitchen is not terrible. I mean, I would get rid of the black wallpaper, but, you know, it's it's Fine. clean and sleek. Here's the bedroom. No yep. virtual staging there. And the bathroom. So it's original, but this wallpaper, get rid of the wallpaper. Okay. It, what it's saying is gut job. A yeah. gut job. But here's the thing. Why does this person think that when the last sale was 614, that they're going to get an offer at a 659 list price when they're in worse condition? 
So, so what would you do? Okay. Okay. So here are my recommendations. You either say, I mean, I give up. What what's the phrase for that? Throw in the towel, reduce the price to six fifteen at the most, and just say fire sale be done. But really, you could do better than that. I would spend. I don't think it would take much more than forty five thousand dollars. I think it would. Well, okay. I'm saying bare bones. I'm saying bare bones. That tile so, in the front hall. That is. Get rid that of the is, tile. Do the no, floor. No, no, Twenty five thousand dollars is the tile and the carpet. Both. Okay. But that's. But then you have no money for anything else. Well, okay. There, there is work that needs to be done in this hall. My point is, your high water mark is eight twenty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have to be smart. But even if you spent a hundred, you could get eight twenty. Right. Yeah. But you got to go one way or the other. Yes. You no, can't. right now you have to sell it to somebody who wants a project and somebody who to wants to do the work themselves and live in it and do it their own way. Me personally, I would rather buy this condo and then do it the way I wanted, yeah. but I wouldn't buy it at 659. No. It's a good you know. well, what they what they Here's what some sellers say. I know I'm not going to get 659, just make me an offer. But as you and I have discussed all the time, buyers have been broken by Amazon. They yeah. want to pay the list price or offer less, but they want to know that right. the list price is a fair price, not a give me an offer price. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the numbers show it. People are paying 98% of the last list price or even more. Yeah. So, yeah, the strategy of I'll put a price and the market will decide doesn't fly. It hurts you. It doesn't help you. Right. And the other thing I would do, and you tell me if you would disagree. Okay. I just put right on there, rehabber special. Right. Don't pretend, you know, you're a silly. Not move right in. Yeah. 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 Exactly right. I mean, you could move right in if everything works, but my, you know. Sometimes, and I don't know if this is an estate sale or not, you know, who knows? Sometimes writing a state sale makes everyone go, ah, okay. I'm in. Let me know that. That's another word for rehabber special. A state yeah. sale. Done. Exactly. Call a state is paid. Opportunity. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So anyway. Anybody out there, if, if you're interested in uh, throwing a bid in on one of these at the right price, let us know. Because we can help. <laughs> and they would be happy. Exactly. And you've just gotten skinny on what they're really worth. So um, that's the story. Great. Anything else? One more time, I want to wish my husband a happy 35th wedding anniversary. And I don't know what we're talking about next week, but we'll, we'll come, come up, up with something up. really good again. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have questions, we love answering questions on the air. So please send us direct messages, text us, call us. Please subscribe to our shows on YouTube and follow us on Facebook.